Okay, so I want to talk a little more about unpacking your data and specifically focus on a top-down, bottom-up type approach. So really what we've got, uh, if we look at a top-down approach, what this means is that can we take the evidence that we've extracted and categorize it in some way? And in, this, in a top-down way, there's a mnemonic called A-E-I-O-U which will help us take the evidence that we've achieved and pop drop it into buckets. Now the other way to do this is bottom up. <laughs> All right. And through the bottom up approach, we can just use an affinity map or affinity analysis. Okay. So in this case, we're categorizing the evidence based upon the AIU categories. Okay, so what we, ha we have is activities, and these are normally the types of goal-based things that I'm trying to pursue. Okay, um, we have environments, so this is the stadium, the um, classroom, the office place, all of those types of things that uh, this activity occurs within. The next one is interactions. Well, what are the interactions are we actually seeing? Are these interactions between people? Are they between people and objects and describing the actual interaction? Um, the next one is the O, which stands for objects. So what type of objects am I interacting with? And remember, we, in the fourth order of design, you'll see the second order tends to be more between people and objects, whereas the third order tends to be between people and people. So you'll find that um, the more you have within interactions tends to uh, give you an indication of, okay, there's lots of third order type of things occurring here. Whereas if you start to extract a lot of uh, data points and put, put them in the object space, you tend to see, okay, there seems to be a second order issue that's occurring here. And remember that we also showed you how you can mix those. So O is for objects, and this is object to object interaction actually, and as well as person to object interaction. And U is the actual users. So you know, ultimately we're gonna build personas from these. And this little mnemonic gives us an idea of, okay, let's take this information and let's drop it into these buckets. So as you're categorizing your information on your great wall of research, you can actually use a top-down mechanism to do that. All right. Now I'm going to put insight in the middle here because I think that's actually what we're trying to do as we categorize the information. So now we've got a bottom-up approach. Well, that really just says, can we take um, relevant information and using our lens of knowledge and wisdom, can we cluster that in different ways? So take um, different colored post-it notes and really just collect them together. And really there's, there's a couple of layers of post-it notes that you can use. Um, for this exercise, we find that uh, as your first iteration, you know, just do your standard notes. Uh, you, you put a note down uh, from every observation that you make as you interact with your users. Now, a quick point to remember is that for each interview and each interaction that I have with a user, I should expect to extract anything from 50 to 80 post-it notes. So each post-it note is an observation that I've made from my interaction with that individual. And those observations are jotted down on a post-it note and I suggest you put a little reference code there so you can refer that reference code back to the interview section that you've actually had. So you could be listening to a, a transcribed interview, which is what I advise you to do. And then all you're doing is you code it, you write it down as an observation, you come to your research wall and you put it up on your research wall. Affinity analysis says now we go through those and we, and we group together like types of observations and we put an overarching um, theme which goes with it. Um, so if we see, for example, how people manage email, you could, for example, cluster together all of the stuff which says, oh, all these people print out their emails so that they can actually get on with their day and figure out what they need to do. These people prefer a mobile version and there's some observations here that specifically relate to um, how people interact with different types of tools. So you could actually now build your own categorization system using an affinity map. So it's a little more abstract, a little looser, allows you to define your own um, um, categorization for observations um, versus more of a top-down approach. Now both of these categorizations, so ultimately by the way the themes that come out of here, so the themes are almost the second level. So the lower level are normally my yellow post-it notes, the themes are normally my blue post-it notes as I cluster them all together. These themes basically are the same as that but a lot richer because you've now made it relevant to the specific observations and evidence that you've particularly used. So this is really a top-down and bottom-up way for you to categorize your information so that you can actually start to produce a series of insights from this. 
So my suggestion is use a combination of both. You're going to be using things like an affinity map um, quite often actually, especially with all post-it notes that you can move around. My suggestion is that uh, in your design studio, if you have one, that you just plaster your entire wall full of uh, butcher paper so that you've got this wall that you can work with and move stuff around with. Okay, but be, be very um, specific around the color coding of post-it notes and referencing that back, that, that back to the evidence as well. Because you want to be able to prove that this observation is backed up by evidence. It's not just my assumption. It's not just how I'm interpreted. It, it, it occurred, I saw it, and it happened in the behavior of this individual. Or I saw it in the strategic planning document. Very important that you do that because that's what allows you to keep your wall of, of, wall of wisdom, your wall of research um, up to date. Uh, and to age it correctly um, and to keep up to date with all the changes that are occurring within your business. So that's top-down, bottom-up approaches.